How you doing, Luke? Good, man. What's going on? Just being the boring guy, I guess, is the trend for just these. A, just a couple of boring guys. Yeah. <laughs> boring guys. Actually, Luke worked for us. So, and he started the old uh, uh, selling and all this stuff with us, the sales neighbor. So, Luke, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Tell us the before and after and all that jazz, and uh, we go from there. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about it, right? So, actually, in like 20, the middle of 2017, I was um, about to actually join the police force. I was like this close. Yeah. I had already done the interview and I had to do my like fitness testing. Um, and then I injured my back at the gym, right? Really badly, really badly. And I had to have surgery. And then after the injury, like I lost a little bit of movement in my toes and stuff. So like, I can't really run like I used to. So the, the police was out the window, right? Um, and actually at that time, I was working at FedEx and there was a few years there where I was just kind of like trying to put my, put my life back together. Um, and then I think it was like early, late 2019 or early 2020, I came across um, Matt's content, right? Actually, he was interviewed on Pat's podcast, the dog training podcast at the time. So I was also like starting to learn about dog training and this and that. So it kind of happened at the same time. I, went from like I was still at FedEx, but I was studying to become a dog trainer. But then I was starting to like listen to your your guys' content. I was like, what is this, you know, this sales thing, this like online remote selling kind of thing. I was like fascinated by it, right? Um, next thing you know, I you know, got introduced to to Matt basically. Well, there's a bit of a story behind that as well, which Matt's told that story a couple of times where I kind of almost stalked him because his office at the time was in um was in Zetland, which was in my FedEx run. And I basically I made these like custom memes and like delivered it to him, like pretending like it was a real FedEx thing. Yeah. Because at that time I think every man and his dog was sending Matt DMs like, give me a job, give me a job, right? And um that kind of got through the noise, I think, and 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 he gave me a shot, and I was doing, you know, I came on with you guys. I started doing like DMs, right? Dan Dan took me on, took me under his wing. You did, Matt did, and there was a few months there. I was just doing doing DMs for a while, right? And and started yeah. to learn the NEPQ process. So I, I gotta say, like on my side as well, because like we train you, but I saw you like develop. Like you, like, you know, how long have you been in sales? Like sales, like sales call. Let's take the DM setting up. Right? Calls, it's so, just gone one year. Like this week is probably one year. Exactly. So you, you make per month more than people that have been in sales for really long, right? Yeah. I speak to those guys all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, what do you think was the catalyst? I mean, you're definitely not a worker. You're definitely a team person. Like, man, I love working with you overall, right? So let's put that aside. But what do you feel is the catalyst? Because, like, yes, I understand the NPQ is the methodology, is great, perfect. But what's the things that made you go, like, fuck, man, like, I know how to sell. Because you know how to sell now, right? For sure, obviously, NPQ. But then I think, for me, I've been very lucky from day one. I got put with, like, Dan, right? Like, very closely with Dan. Like, we kind of like some of the original Aussie crew here, right? Um, he, even though he's in Perth and I actually haven't seen Dan in like a year, but we, we, we talk on the phone every day. So being taught by him and he was taught by you. So that become kind of, kind of like a chain effect, you know, where I was being mentored by him while, while he was being mentored by you. And of course you were mentoring me as well. Um, that make it di- made a big difference. Um, I would say in terms of like my, like drive to get there really fast though, like, you know, I'm 36 now, I was 35 when I joined and it was kind of like now or never and i was engaged about to be married like we got married this year it's like there's no more that's it like whatever i whatever i do now that's got to be it you know what i mean i had to make it work looking back at the fedex day right how how has everything changed over kind of day to day um well i work from home now (laughs) as opposed to driving around all day but i mean I knew that like living in Sydney, that being a FedEx guy wasn't like, if I wanted to have a family and live a reasonable lifestyle, like how could I possibly do that on that wage, right? In this day and age. 
And so before any PQ, I almost like sat down and any PQ'd myself. I consequenced myself, like what's going to happen? I keep doing this for the next years, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I had to, I had to do it. I had to make a change. Well, what was he scary though? Like, what was he scary? You like leaving that job and like, you know, kind of like because <laughs> sales you rely on your skills. That's where you go, right? Yeah. So it's like uh, FedEx is a little bit different. You rely on like doing the job, doing the yeah, job. yeah, Me, yeah. Not. So was he scary? Like, have you felt like scared during the way? Like that? It's funny, right? Because when I was leaving um, FedEx, I actually originally I left it at the time that I was taking my dog business full time. But at the like literally a week before I left FedEx was the time that I got connected with Matt as well. So they kind of overlapped. But when I made the decision to leave FedEx, it wasn't like I kind of knew if I was going to be joining Sniper or not, you know? Um, definitely was scary. It was scary. I, I would say maybe part of my reason to even look into Sniper at that point was kind of like hedging my bets because I was like, what if the dog thing doesn't work out? But I was also fascinated by this whole, this, you know, I, once Matt was on that podcast, I just like binged all your guys' content, all your YouTube stuff, all that stuff, right? And so they kind of lined up at the same time. It was it was scary, but I think maybe that's that that like no safety net kind of thing was what propelled me to yeah. try harder. Yeah, you know, well they say like burn the boats kind of thing. You know, hey, hey, you 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 still train dogs, right? Correct. So it's, you do it yeah, more. it's more like a part time thing now. But I, I'm slowly winding it back a bit. And uh, it, there was a period uh, because, of course, you were doing the DM setting inside. They were starting taking sales calls that you were using NPQ with the as with your clients. Yeah. You I still do. Them? Yeah, I still do. I use it on my wife all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's that's the thing. It's a it's applicable everywhere. Like you know, it's it's not it's persuasion, right? Like it's not just making sales calls. Well, it's a, it's psychology, human behavior, right? So yeah, if they want something. But they got a limitation to it. And yep. Every aspect is the same. Like, you know, if you buy a fridge, if you buy a house and stuff like that. So there's a problem, you find the gap. Yeah. You know I, what I, mean? I don't really understand when people say it's like, ah, oh, it doesn't work in my industry. It's like, well, it's not. Maybe the self, pro- like what, you, what you're talking about is the sales process. Mm. Right? But the questioning, the, the movement into the calls, the, 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 you know, the boxes like situation, question, program awareness, they work. They just need to be reshifted. Like yeah. That. Main, I right? think people who say that are probably focusing maybe too much on like product knowledge. They're like, oh no, my product is so special, this or that. And it's like you're still selling to a human being who has a problem, who has a gap, who has something to be solved. Right? Exactly right. That's that's that, that, that's the main problem is is that one. It's like, and we're training a, a big financial company now, right? And just jump off that training, and they've been spending um I think like something like the past three or four years on like product pushing, right? Mm. So that idea is like when you change structure, you're going from product pushing to questions, what they feel is they lose effectiveness into the sales process. But effectiveness is not in your product. Like it's, nobody really cares because like, there's many of those, right? Yeah. It, uh, effectiveness is in the pain point. Is then is in the needs of what they want to do and discover those needs, right? Yeah. So, that's the, that's the that's the name of the game. What's uh what's what's next for you? I mean, like you 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 maybe making a good living in terms of like you 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 know for being sales for that short to you mm. page. What's uh what's the name? Because we all gotta learn something. Like what's the name things you reckon that you gotta learn or move on or? I think at the moment, like I'm just focusing on getting like being like better every week, week on week. You know, like or day on day right? In the sales calls. Cause like I, I've only been in it for 12 months. Like sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that. Mm. If you have like a, a sales call that doesn't go your way or this or that. And you're like, why didn't that work? It's like, if you zoom out, like compared to where I was a year ago or 14, 15 months ago, it's night and day. So I want to be able to take another 15 months and look back on this and, and see how I've, how much I've grown at that point. Right. But like, I enjoy selling. It's fun. We get to help people. Yeah, you know, I've got a question for you. Like a lot of people struggle with objection handling, right? Mm. Uh, tends to be my good point. But that aside, um, how did you approach objection handling when you first started? Like, what was your first objection to overcome? Right? And how did you approach it? 
I think we, I was lucky because even though we learned NEPQ, like the, a lot of the training that we did initially came from Matt's side of things. So like, um, he, you know, he says it himself, like he kind of teaches sales for dummies. Right. And it's like almost like cheat codes. Yeah. So using a lot of like, um, frames and analogies and stuff like earlier in the call to kind of tie up, tie people up in boxes before you're going to even get those objections at the end. But then even just like the resources that we have, like, you know, if anyone is struggling with objections, the first thing I would point them to is like the objection handling matrix. Like that's a free resource, right? And that took Matt a long time to put together, but it's like literally do this, then this, then this, then this. Like if you stay on the rails and you do it properly, like you can't, you know, it's very hard to go wrong, right? Yeah. And so that helped me a lot when I was first learning it because I'm like, that's how I learn. It's like, do this, do this, do this. Yeah, but it's also like the fear. Like that's that's the way I feel it. And we, I coach people into the inner circle uh, and now three point two as well for objection handling. And like what I realize is a lot of people have fear to to step in their cage, right? But that's like what that's what's required. Uh, just the, the only fear, the main fear they have is they don't know what to say. Yeah, that's the other. If you I think the biggest thing with objection handling is just never running out of something to say and never like being like, never being as the sales guy being like calling the end of the call. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I've had calls where I sat there in silence for five minutes while the guys just, you can just see he's just like the grind, the gears are just turning in his head, particularly when it's like a logistical thing. And they're just sitting there like literally trying to think of how they can put the money together to solve their problem. Yeah. Two, three minutes of absolute silence. I just sit there and doesn't that's that doesn't that's not awkward for me. It doesn't worry me. But it's maybe some some salespeople they would find that awkward. They're trying to fill the space or they'd be like, okay, let's just book a follow-up or something like that. You know? Yeah, they they they, they generally go straight into like there is always uh, that's the way I explain it. And we use this live also for teach people is like when you present the price, which we have a specific way of doing it, right? But when we present the price, there's always that split second where you can dip and just leave and just say, hey, okay, that's not a problem. Like, do you want me to connect with you on next week? Or what's what's the, what, what, what's uh, like, what do you want to do? Or either you decide to go like 45 minutes in and say, okay, <laughs> gloves <go."> off. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's And that's like, I learned from Dan. So we, that we just go gloves off most of the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's like because because like, they, they understand this is like ninety percent of people in sales that make uh, below the seven k, below the five k, at that point right there they dip out. Mm. It's a ten percent that makes twenty to thirty k to forty, fifty to up to a hundred. Uh, that in that split second they decide to commit, right? So they yeah. go, okay, fuck it now. Let's see how fucking ugly it gets. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if the other person uh, kind of like, I'm not going to get offended. I'm not going to feel rejected. I'm just going to see and have fun. Yeah, that it is. You're right. It, that is the most fun part of the call, especially when we're selling, because we sell NEPQ, right? Me, me and Dan and, and, and the boys, right? So we are selling to salespeople. So it's almost like, okay, we do the presentation. Like, okay, hit me with your objections. Like salesman to salesman, let's go. It's like gloves yeah. off. Yeah, it, it kind of gives you it gives you an advantage if it doesn't because like it's like playing chess and knowing how the other person moves, right? Also because they've seen the content of Jeremy yeah. and stuff, so they know the consequence yeah. is coming around. But it's also good because like we have a super fulfillment rate which is high, and it's always easy to sell um, a program there. Uh, you know that you know that it's going to fulfill, and that's what a lot of people struggle out there. So yeah, we, we yeah the, the clients are happy, right? And the testimonials like we're very lucky to have such a great product to be able to sell and the testimonials kind of speak speak to that right so yeah, it does make it easier you know as jeremy's hard work mixed with some of the tweaks that we made since we came in we, and we both made a ton of like the three of us as well like it isn't money in sales but you guys being with us like i had the luck to work with dan for example right when he used to start coming up and it was terrible sales now he's probably one of the best sales guy i've ever seen yeah you just want to beat the whole company on the Not right you know you can tell, like, you know, the, the leads that he was sending, the people that were sending, they weren't great, but we're still making sales. So be able to transfer that to people is a gift. And that's why also for us, uh, I would like to thank all our clients. Like, they, you know, everyone, they either decide to jump on a call with us for C because, like, that, I know that is not easy, uh, but you have a lot of faith in us and uh, we're going to do the best that we can for getting the results. That's the most important things for yeah. us. Yeah. As yeah. A 
Yeah. And so it's cool. Like a few months or even now, like I'm getting tagged in stuff. There was a guy that joined last, not even a week ago today, a uh, car sales guy in Canada. His name name's Todd, right? And he posted this uh, testimonial like yesterday. I didn't ask him for it. He just put it in the group. Um, and like he basically wrote in that post, like he goes, after I went through the portal, I realized like I felt like now looking back, I knew nothing about sales before I did any PQ. I was just inducing resistance, inducing objection, right? It's like a light switch goes on for them. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in, in industry where they've been, when things have been doing, like say, not wrong because we can't say wrong. There's not such a right or wrong in mm. sales, right? But let's say they decide to put an ending up on themselves for really long, <laughs> <laughs> right? And after they go and switch, it's like, oh, fuck, that's great. Because yeah. they feel better. That's- They've been playing the video game on hard mode. <laughs> yeah, it's like the video game is like fucking extremely like, like legend yeah. mode and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, well, one, one question I have for you is this one. It's like, um, like we, we talk about the goods and, and the, now let's talk about the bad. Like, what was the toughest part? I think when I first started, like, just the kind of feeling of not overwhelm what's the word just like there's so much to learn and like you're trying to get results really fast and there's those first few weeks or months where you almost feel like you know like when a when a baby like horse or something is born and they're just kind of flopping around like that's how you feel like a bit silly for a while and you just like you kind of just have to trust that process right and then once you get through that first maybe you know six to 12 weeks i think the you know, the light starts to come on you start to see like the structure appear that for me doing the dm setting helped a lot because you're using the nepq process but it's like it's a lot less pressure than being on the phone right because it's just a just a chat conversation you know you can leave it you can come back to it and like that's a skill set that I have now that I still that I still use, right? Like when the leads are um, a little bit low or whatever, or it's a quiet week, I can just jump in and like farm the group, and I've still got that. So like that difficulty initially gave me that skill, and actually Dan taught me that, right? He's like, you got to be able to hunt that, like, on a regular basis, right? So like at the I, end of the day, we, we all run our own businesses. Mm. Right? Even if we're employed by someone else as a sales guy, you just run your own thing. Yeah. It's a mini business for sure. It's a mini business. So you have the marketing lead generation on your side most of the time, right? Yeah. Because like, let's say traditional marketing with book calls and stuff. Yes, that can be done. Mm. But let's say the m- making the extra money, m- making the good money and getting to the next level yeah. is like sweating. Referrals, it's- hunting, you know, upsells, cross sales. It's actually because like sales can be very repetitive. But if you look at it from a different way, like it, it actually lets you be a little bit creative because you're like, okay, what are some cool things that I can do to like generate some, some leads for myself, right? There's always opportunity out there. You just have to kind of like think, where is it? Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, for example, for me, that, that was the biggest one is like the freedom of like changing things uh, into the process, right? Uh, into the questions and also the freedom of like, okay, now what am I going to do? I'm going to call, call, I'm going to prospect, I'm going to go to elites. Like that's, that was the biggest thing that they separate this from like previous jobs, right? And I've done, we don't want to go down to do the jobs that are done and all that jazz, but it's like, there were more structures. They were like, you, that's what you got to do. Stick on that, do it. That's it. This one, yes, is repetitive as when you get to the sales, but the previous is like he allows you a ton of freedom and creativity. Yeah. Right? That's that's why objection handling is so much fun too because it's like the one part of the call that you don't know which way it's going to go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, I, mean, I ask you a ton of questions. Um, I always leave the last one. It's like, what kind of question do you have for me? <laughs> if you were in my position now, a year into your sales career, what would what's your biggest advice to me? Like, that's a good one. Um, I think there is a lot of things. That's a big one. So when you start getting good, right? Generally, the ego kicks in. Mm. So like, um, especially when you make decent money, is it's difficult to stay in character type of things, right? Yeah, I think there is a say that I always get. 
um, uh, from David Chappelle, which is like, um, success can take you where uh, character can't sustain you. Uh, right. And that's the reality of things with people in sales, especially when you're on a team. It's like you feel like you're the best of the team. No one can touch you. But th that's not true. It's like, well, there is a, the layers of people that they are in the position that you were. Yep. So your responsibility is to impact them, to help yep. them, to, yeah. to move them across the line. We have a great team. We're very lucky, you know, guys like young guys, like all the you know, team's massive. But, you know, one someone who sticks out in my mind, like Kevin, you know, Kevin Pham. Uh, Aussie guy on the team and like he's probably one of the best SDR type roles that I've seen in ever like I've never seen someone who's as good as him and like we I really enjoy like kind of helping him out you know what I mean and like because that was me six to twelve months ago exactly right, right. that's I get a, I get a lot out of that you know and also like <laughs> the big one is like when I used to coach Dan and me and Dan I used to live together it was a little mm -hmm. um, different situation it wasn't like uh training every day and all that stuff it helps you also to understand because like some some sort of stuff we do it out of like um, just doing it but we can't explain it to people right so having someone that you coach and you pass knowledge on helps you to break it down yeah better, but you understand what the fuck it makes doing. me get better exactly right yeah exactly it makes the process replicable because all of a sudden like you are understanding like Hey man, like that's the way how I do it. Like, oh, okay, that's the way how I explain it. And after you see people redoing it, it's like, oh, okay, perfect. Like, you know, I explain it well. So the next step is impact, is how do you impact other people? Right? Yes. That's my advice. Yeah. Okay. So at that point, we're going to go back on sales calls. <laughs> <laughs> ne from next week, I feel you're not going to see my ugly face anymore, but Jeremy's coming back fresh, renewed, and all good, ready to go. His trip to Poland. Yeah, so he's in Poland. If you uh, if you want to message him, he's sick actually. Uh, with him, I think he has like tonsillitis and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, he recorded yeah. too much content, lost his voice. Yeah, he got so much content for you guys. So message him and just tell him like to get better ASAP. <laughs> You're not stuck with us. He's a sales guy with no voice. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's that's the worst. Yeah. The, the, the biggest nightmare is to lose my job. <laughs> His money maker, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. All right, perfect. Uh, they, we will let you go, guys. Thanks, Luke, for coming in, and uh, yeah, see you see you next month. Not even next week. Next week is Jeremy. Next month. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're gonna help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.